All right, next question. A developer is creating an automation that will run on the user machine but should not interfere with the user work. What should be avoided in this type of process? Well, hardware events will interfere with the user work, so the user should avoid it. Um, API call, of course, work in the background. Trigger and monitor events work in the background and Orchestrator activities also work in the background. So the answer is hardware events. Next, the developer runs workflow analyzer with the default tools and retrieve the following warning description on one of the workflow. So what is the cause of the warning? Well, there is no rule like this <laughs> that you cannot use to log message activity. Well, you can use multiple log message activity if the display name is not the default. And then, well, this is probably the answer because the workflow cannot contain two log message activities with the default name. Well, actually, any uh, activities that you use twice, so they should not use the default name. So, this should be the answer. And this last option will not result any warning so right the correct answer is this one what is a characteristic of the final state in a state machine so i guess this one is the answer there should be a state or at state must be connected to a final state well you cannot connect or transition a final state to another final state so this one is wrong and again you cannot uh, connect or transition from the final state so this one is also wrong and final state uh, does not have a transition or an exit section so this one is also wrong so our, our answer is the state must be connected to a final state a click activity with a partial selector is nested when inside another activity in which activity is the click activity contained for the workflow to execute well, Excel application scope, we know this is not for UI automation. Well, surprisingly, I found out that you can place a click activity inside the scope, but if it is a partial selector, then it will not work. A touch window activity has a window or application selector, which is what is missing with partial selector. So this should be the answer for the workflow to execute. But... <clears throat> Pick branch, uh, you can nest a click, a click activity in a pick branch, but if the click selector is partial, it will probably not execute. And for defined element activity, you cannot nest a click activity in this type of activity, so this option is wrong. Alright, the answer is attach window. When unexpected error occurs at the application level in the process.xml file of the robotic enterprise framework, which type of exception is caught by default? Well, in the UI path, there are two main exceptions, the, the system exception and the business rule exception. The developer set the business rule exception and errors related to applications are considered system exception. So the answer should be system exception. Let's find that here, system.exception. The developer is using UI Explorer and identifies an element. After identification, the validate button appears as shown in the following graphic. Well, this image indicates that the selector was modified and can be revalidated. So the answer is this one. It is a good practice to validate the selector every time we make an update. A developer is working with a variable name, list customer ID of type list of string, which is initialized with 1001 and 1002 in the same order. The arguments panel of the inbook code activity is reflected below. And based on the graphic, what is the output of the right line activity? Well, here I copy the workflow, so let's run to test to see what will be the output. And here we can see that the answer is 103, then 102, and then 101. And the reverse function causes the order in the output panel. So let's select that answer in here, 103, 102, and 101. 
Next, you need to download a report from the ACME website as shown in the following graphic. When you capture the month field selector, it appears as shown in the following graphic. How should a selector be modified so that it can be used to select the drop down for any given month? So for the first option, uh, it removes the attributes for the month field. So this one is wrong. Next is this selector uses a, a variable but not in a proper way of doing it. So this one is also wrong. This one should be the correct answer. This is how you properly use a variable name in a selector or in a value field of a selector attribute. So, yep. This one is wrong because it uses a wildcard character for the month field. And it will probably confuse you, iPad, if you do this kind of selector. So, this one is the answer. Which state and file in the robotic enterprise framework is the config file read that should be the initialization and the init all setting but let's check in UiPath to prove that so here the initialization state and then here you will see this init all setting if you open that you will see that this is the part where UiPath read the configuration file you can also verify that here because in the import argument you can see here that this are this workflow outputs the configuration values and uh, pass it to the config global scope variable. So that is our answer: initialization and init all setting. Review the following graphic uh, based on the graphic lags of which label will be sent to orchestrator during the process execution. So the selected lag level is information, so this will be information and above. If that is trace, then that will be trace and above. But since again, the selected uh, lag level is information, the answer will be information and above. There is no lag level like information only. And right.